clicked button of go. Wait, the live button? <laughs> yeah. Because um... we were supposed to start at 2.45. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing's not here. The live page it is. Maybe it'll work. There's seven people waiting. Maybe it's only work. Maybe it's just working from here. <laughs> Go ahead and hit me with a hangout while we're waiting on this. Yeah. Let's see. Where has just been? Boop. Should be ringing. Okay, it works for me. For some reason, for me, it says wait a, wait for another 10 minutes. Mm. Yeah. All right. In any case, I just put the. Uh, um, social media networks out there to uh, well, everyone else would like wait, to join. If they're going to wait for 10 <laughs> minutes, then they're going to wait for 10 minutes. <laughs> It'll give us time to set up. It's the whole point of a. Uh... That's a weird setting. I tried to set it for 245 exactly, but it wouldn't let me. Yeah, no, for me, it says, uh, uh, if we go to the YouTube channel, it says, yeah, it's live thing. There are like three people watching. Okay, cool. Let me watch that. Oh, okay. Look, it finally just gave up and said, oh, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's working. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You, you, YouTube's going to YouTube, man. It's Wednesday. YouTube's going to throw a hissy fit just because he can. Mm -hmm. That's how it rolls, son. Yeah. And Vin's still setting up the shots because, uh, well, seems we're down a Lutris this week. <laughs> uh, you're sending me a return video. Um. But now you're sending camera video. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we if you're just going to send me a return video through Jitsi. I, we can get rid of the hangout. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's dead now. It, it was just being a... <laughs> it, it was just being a Wednesday. That's all, man. It's going to be one of those shows. I think the first fix you made on Sunday fixed the issue. Who? Mm -hmm. House Engines and Dreadmore. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the LCL. Right. <laughs> Did you see my, uh, my post, Mr. Alert, about there's no audio now. <laughs> and now the Hangouts video is frozen. Good. <laughs> uh. We didn't start everything in the correct launch sequence. It's probably the yeah. reason. This will be easy enough to fix. Let me just give um, Hangouts a reboot. Yes. No, that used to be Bastion. <laughs> there was a bug with the Bastion port, uh, the Linux version, that if you... If you installed it to a system-wide folder and you attempted to run it as a regular user, there we go, uh, it would just crash the moment you touched the mouse. <laughs> mm. 
Okay. Yeah, for some reason, if I use SDLCL, there's no audio. If I get rid of the uh, LCL, SDL 1.2 SO library, it just, the audio comes back. The movies still work. I tried to uh, compile NW movies with the dash LZ flag to see if it would get rid of that undefined symbol error, but it didn't. So, I don't know. Probably gonna have to uh, submit an issue to the NW movies git, because they do have a git, just, I don't know if they still keep it up to date, if they still look at it, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, we do have this shot. That seems to be working. So it's going to be one, three, four, five. All right. I'm yellow again. I mean, for the longest time, it was actually <laughs> would change colors. Then um, LGZ last week, well, last weekend, it was fine. I wasn't yellow. I wasn't green. Now I'm yellow again. It's horrifying. I have no idea. Uh, well, unless you have multiple monitors and you want to play it in full screen, at which point it will just disable whatever other monitor it's not rendering on. <laughs> that's the, that's one of the big bugs with SDL 1.2. That and controller mapping. It would detect most controllers, to be fair, but good luck remapping it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Definitely with me when it comes to controller remapping. It's like, oh, look, it doesn't. Nope. Alt F4. <laughs> Another reason that uh, Hollow Knight's so good. You can remap everything. That's... You would think in 2017 that wouldn't be something you'd have to congratulate a game on. Yeah, it should be expected behavior at this point, but it isn't. Let's see. WDW. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's locked. Right, Rio. I'm gonna go get a refill before we get started. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I remember playing Quake Four. It didn't have the Alt Tab feature. Precisely. That's another thing SDL 1.2 doesn't do. No Alt Tabbing. It will just take your keyboard input and say it's mine. All mine. Urban Terror has no alt tab either. Precisely, that's SDL 1.2's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Linux Nero just got killed by a baguette. <laughs> uh, Discord. Fact two statically links SDL, so no SDL CL. Yeah. Well, I don't know if. Hmm. Uh, you could try stripping the, uh, you could try stripping the, the executable file for fact. Don't know if that'll actually work, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if the game was statically linked against it, uh, chances are the executable will have it there. That's why I said strip it. Run strip uh, dash dash all dash unneeded, I think. 
and then try and and, uh, and drop the SDL CL SDL 1.2 SO file in there. Could work, might not. Um. Yeah, that's one of the good things about SDL2. Just another one. Zlib library. You want to use just a teeny tiny bit of it? You can. <laughs> you don't want to worry about having to uh, mention that in the uh, in the comments of your code. You can do that too. As long as you don't claim that you did that, that's fine. <laughs> what are we on about? Uh, SDL 1.2 was uh, LGPL, while SDL 2 is Zlib. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one Rohit. I'm not sure. It won't do anything about the statically linked libraries. Well, then that's that sucks. <laughs> then just stripping it won't do. Hmm. I do. I do have his replacement image, I mean, if we need. To <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it needs hair. <laughs> Maybe I'll just throw, throw that in there in case I accidentally cut, so it just won't be a blank page. <laughs> Needs really fashionable hair, though. <laughs> there we go. Let's rather you look delicious. Ah. Maddie, you're fortunate because um, Charter decided to flip something about an hour and a half ago and just noped all of my internet connectivity. For about an hour, that was that was fun, exciting, not knowing whether or not. Um, oh, you're getting down to a third. <laughs> uh, went from fifty fifty to three hundred down and a hundred and fifteen up. <laughs> I mean, for Canada, that's pretty good. Better than yours. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's especially difficult if you're not living on the coast of Canada because every time someone in the middle of Canada is like, hey, um, internet speed's really bad, a eh? the telcos go like, Wait, fucking people live there? What? <laughs> huh? Wait, there are people living in Saskatchewan? Huh. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, well, for being honest, the... Uh, didn't we check the population density between Canada and Russia, and Russia still had a higher population density? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Ven's here. My turn. I'm gonna go grab a smoke. I'll be back. You poor things. Do do do, because I'm still setting things up before go time. Fifty mile north. Do, do, do. Twenty gigs of old Linux games. I don't know, man. Like old old Linux games? I didn't even know there were twenty gigs of pre Steam Linux games. setting up these shots shot shot shots
don't know, 20 gigs. Oh, gee, who, what are we talking around? Like 99? I thought it was pretty smooth because I had like two 20 gig. And what is it, ATA drives? Then LSR Zero. It was pretty slick back in the day. We don't need any audio from that input. That's good, and that's good. All right. Jumpers. Uh, it's a name I've not heard in some time. I'm trying to explain what jumpers are. Remember when your um, ISA cards and PCI cards had jumpers on them? Tracking down the RQs. I think my first jumperless card was my 3DFX Voodoo 1 pass through card. And I remember installing that thinking, this will never work. It worked. <laughs> Oh yeah, when like the first two gigabyte drives came out, there were some BIOS hacks. The first, let's see, the first gigabyte sized drive that showed up around the house was a 1.3 gigabyte that my mom bought because she needed more space to hold her, the school stuff. She's a teacher. Um, yeah, I. <laughs> my dad thought, hey, let's test it. Let's install uh, Fallout 2, like do the full installation. It was like 700 megs at the time. It was a big deal. And my mom was like, I'm already running out of space. What the hell? My dad's like, yeah, we're going to have to get rid of that. <laughs> That was always the thing, man, because, I mean, you could definitely um, sometimes get away with doing a full install of a game, but yeah, <laughs> no, that was about it. Right. It wasn't until I got my Pentium 4 that came with a 40 gigabyte hard drive. It's like, hey, full install all the games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fallout 2, Diablo 2, it's like, yeah. <laughs> and after 40, they, they, they just went YOLO on storage. Yeah. Of course, nowadays gig. we're kind of hitting that cap on platter density. You could maybe shove seven, or well, eight different platters on a single hard drive and maybe get the. Um, if you want to keep the costs reasonable for a consumer market, 12 terabytes? Well, they're having to do all the effy things, like the mechanical hard drives, HDDs are just like straight up lying to the BIOS mm -hmm. now. <laughs> you know, they're like, no, no, there's a, there's only six platters in here. Ooh. <laughs> it, I mean, mechanical hard drives are Rube Goldberg inventions anyway. I mean, when you actually get some, like, artard understanding like i have of how they work you're like really that that actually functions yeah <laughs> and now intel's going hey you know that uh ram speed ssd thing we're doing yeah you could just get a td tiny 16 or 32 gig one and pair that turn it into cash for your however big hard drive see i immediately want one for testing so i can pair it with like a 5400 rpm laptop hard drive Oh, I got one of those sitting on the desk right here. <laughs> Running over a parallel port. <laughs> no, this one's SATA. 
Yeah, no, I got, uh, it's the one that came with a cheaper laptop. It's a Seagate, one terabyte, uh, 5,400 RPM. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of the failing ones. Mm. Yeah. I think one of my first <laughs> larger drives I ever bought was, uh, I nail them too. It was one of the IBM Death Stars with a pixie dust or whatever of course I, I bought the first generation intel ssds that wipe the drive after a bios update and i mm -hmm. oh, the occ ones uh the vertex twos and agility twos also did that mm. <laughs> let's see okay i think we're ready to go yeah mm -hmm. i can go let's get into this short sweet, and fast <laughs> old school yeah <laughs> Actually, uh, quadruple check something in the recording. Do I have that muted? That's a good thing I double checked that. Uh, okay, so when I change. I have this three thing. very elderly AMD systems which work here. I have a 1.2 gigahertz single core AMD netbook. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's absolutely nothing else in this system that model legs it as much as the CPU. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take that midweek break to cover all the fascinating things that we've found going on in the Linux world. And this week is no exception because Debian is shutting down their FTP servers. Both users are reportedly extremely irate, and OpenSnitch is a little firewall in Oyatron that will tell you exactly what's going on. And I said, hey, Unity was hacked. Uh, no, uh, not that one, the other one. And do you have an old SCSI hard drive laying about? Well, someone created a Raspberry Pi controller for it. Mm. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, uh, Mathieu Commandant is not joining us this week. He has uh, been involved in a very serious crepe-related accident, but we must soldier on, starting with YouTube download GUI. Yes, you're not making that up. This is a real thing for <laughs> Linux users. And... Um, it's currently out, man. It's cross-platform front-end GUI for the popular YouTube DL, which I think everyone knows. And yeah. uh, quite unfortunate that, that we don't have Herstrider here because it is written in WX Python. And it's available. It's got the source. It, Arch, Ubuntu, Slackware, PyPy. Um, you you got to help, help me out with this. Uh, you, you just do, man. I mean, why, why do people download YouTube videos, man? Music piracy. Hmm. I know this because uh, torrents are hard for the average computer user and downloading the YouTube video and just having that locally and play it, whatever, you know, you would a regular song. That's how people do it. And I know because that's how people around me, my mom. Uh, <laughs> okay, that, that's, <laughs> that's, what I'm not, uh, that's what I'm not getting is... If you can just listen to it, why, why not just listen to it when you want to listen to it instead of like is it does it is it like the people who need the physical copies of stuff to feel complete as a human being, or in those situations where you're stuck with ADSL internet? Hi mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it uh, there are I can see why people would do it, but they, then again they don't have the technical knowledge to extract the audio from the video file, so they end up just having an MP4 in the middle of all the MP3s of their uh, music library. So hmm. yeah, but you know, looking at that, I mean, it's definitely a thing. Uh, if, if that's what you do, I personally don't get it. Uh, if you want to save some time since you're already using GUI. To just use VLC. You already have it installed. Check. Trust me, yep. you do. And just put that in there, and you you can play it and download. Double you get that like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will get things done. Going from GUI to CLI. Yeah. So, uh, do you feel like you're not pretentious enough? Would you like to whip out your phone in a public place, 
kinky, uh, and just show everyone how much of a lead hack sore you are, well, you can. Uh, the Linux CLI launcher for Android will let you do just that. And yes, I'm not kidding. Someone actually went out and made a CLI interface for Android. Why? I don't know, and neither uh, seems to uh, the um, article author, Mr. Edgar Cervantes. He doesn't seem to know either, and uh, he had a, a little bit at the end of the article that says, um, it's a neat way to practice your Linux commands, uh, but we don't think the regular consumer will ever get it. Yeah, no, that that they're not the target audience, and neither are you, or for that matter, neither are we. Uh, this is for those elitist people that want to feel superior to their less tech literate friends uh, over such things. Nope, nope, no, no. This is the um, equivalent to wearing Crocs. So <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, if if you see someone with this as a, a launcher. Um, you know to avoid them is basically yeah. where you're at because i mean as soon as i read the you know it's a neat way to practice your linux commands it's like no no it's not and dear blog please stick to topics you know about <laughs> this doesn't help with linux in any way i mean it's genuinely just a great tool for the word i'm looking for i'm right posers posers that's that's the word thousand but hey um honestly even though i'm, I'm kind of half um tongue-in-cheek joking about it. it I, I might try it just to go okay well th this is weird or better yet if you have access to somebody's mobile that you don't particularly like oh yeah do right? it do it <laughs> i i definitely think you could get in the business of getting that done unlike debian man ftp that ancient protocol that you, you might might have used to acquire some songs with the ratio servers back and you know what i'm talking about um Distro download servers are too hard to run and users ignore. Okay, fact. Uh, Register.co.uk, all this business in our show notes. Yeah, that, this is a really long um, article saying um, it's dead, Jim. Yeah, and let's face it, nowadays, even the uh, um, the regular repos work off of HTTP. So you don't really need to have the FTP running. You don't. Yeah, I... I initially I was like oh my, you know I kind of blew up I was like, what's going on in this world then I remembered I have actually told kids to get off my lawn in the past <laughs> year uh, you know FFTP I, I use it every week multiple times to upload multiple gigabyte files for this show and our Saturday show um, but I, I sit down and had that one on with myself and no uh, I, I cannot remember the last time I downloaded anything outside of doing like a site backup like work stuff yeah but like downloaded anything via ftp since like the late 90s at best so or whenever you're trying to look at a website that's being uh well that's trying to lock you away from certain places and you just replace the http with ftp and you go poking around the uh the different folders see yeah, if you can access I, I like any that. i love how you finished that it's like can you go poking around i was like yeah when you want to see what's going on on their website yeah that yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's really the only thing i use ftp for right now so <laughs> nah, I, I don't know it's always fun when you see somebody doing that uh, when you're running a site and you get like tail f on the access log for mm -hmm. apache you see that they're digging around and you start creating folders go away seriously i'm watching you and I'll <laughs> just good tip but uh hey uh tv series app series okay check it out the only reason we're going to talk about this is because piracy is legal in portugal and these people are pants on heads yeah. retarded <laughs> again legal is a stretch uh but yeah no this is uh, a uh, an app for linux called series ninja uh, and what it does is it, well, it does basically the same thing that uh, Popcorn Time used to let you do. Uh, you pick a series and it will do, on the back end, it'll do a little torrenting to get the series. And on the front end, you can just <laughs> oh, stream man. the files. Oh, it, it supports Snap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Snap package. There are dev packages. Uh, but for the dev packages, you need... A distro that supports Qt 5.5.1, so at least 1604. Uh, and from there on, it's yeah, it's just a front end for a streaming torrent-based uh, app. Now, uh, here in Portugal, you pay uh, you pay a specific tax on storage, a very 
steep tax for being honest. But it basically all that does is say everything that's on your hard drive, it's yours. So long as you're not actively seeding it and sharing it with other people, that's still illegal. So uh, basically legalized leeching. Mm. Kind, of, kind of going <laughs> off um, Strider's show notes with pay for your stuff, kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do it. You know, I, I used to have Love Vim, Love Film. Now I have Amazon.co UK. Now I have Amazon Prime here in the States, Netflix, Hulu. Forgetting something. I uh, I got my bill now. Oh, HBO when, um, you know, Game of Thrones comes on. Yeah. And that, that's how you support the shows that keep going. And uh, this, is, this is just stupid because get this. Not only is this service thing just on its face, you're like, oh, oh really? Okay, you're going to get nuked from orbit by every alphabet recording. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Charging for it. They, they have three plans of stupidity. 99 cents, 199, and 399. So you can pay someone to pirate it for you. Um, then you have the question <laughs> part, then you have the underpants gnomes, then it says profit. Uh, good luck uh, on getting sued into oblivion, and please don't make stuff like this. And if you're going to make stuff like this, don't make it available on Linux. It's just bad form. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man, open snitch. Now, this is something that um, I don't even know if it's currently available on Mac, OS, whatever version they have. But it used to be. Yeah, it's a little snitch application firewall. If you install this on your Linux box, it will annoy you to death, and it'll be great. <laughs> uh, that's really all it does. I mean, this is currently an alpha version, so... There's not a lot to it. You're basically going to be creating an alert for any outgoing connection application. Well, it, anything that is trying to get out, this thing's going to be like, hey, something's trying to get out. Out, out. Help me out, Pedro. I mean, outside of just scaring the bejee, going again, this is a, our prank episode, apparently. Installing this <laughs> on your mate's computer just so they have like constant terror warnings of like, oh, no. Am I running Windows all over again and I'm running this really paranoid antivirus program? Because I remember those days, yeah. Uh, no, outside of that, I don't see it. But then again, I'm one of those people that has SE Linux properly set up. Yes, on Ubuntu. Go figure. Uh, I have well, a couple that, of other That stuff. also means that you have SE Linux properly disabled in a lot of spots so you can make um, things usable. Yeah, uh, especially with Steam, because uh, Steam, whatever, just changing uh, regular desktop mode from Steam to um, uh, big picture mode, mm -hmm. that's enough to go make SE Linux go, no, no, we're not having any of that. Executable bits in temporary folders and memory, no. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, outside of that, I don't really see the point of open snitch i, I kind of see the point i mean once this is, this is very very early off but once this thing gets full-fledged i can see somebody coming over to linux and i like to see tools like this for new linux users that they want to be secure man i mean they yeah. are they are thinking in the correct way but you know they're not going to fire up nethog or anything in the uh terminal and, and start sniffing around but something like this where maybe it could come with a distro and be like yo and you can kind of put it on you know shut mm -hmm. the f up mostly setting yeah. you know a slider bar i'm giving you free development tips here um just so you know if something panicky comes up they're not yeah flipping a, out, an right? actual blacklist of the known really bad websites or connections uh, ip servers ip addresses that they're trying to connect to you're gonna set that up that mm -hmm. would be nice yeah hey something else is kind of nice really nice uh so fran hofer yeah, you may remember them if you ever tried to get something that plays MP3 files um, over the past couple of years. Well, they can't license the MP3 playback and whatever else anymore because, hey, that patent's expired. So now it's it's free. And you can actually, they, they give you a link to uh, mp3-history.com where you can read all of that and it's got it's got really nice detail about everything and as far as availability goes they say please use their contact form below but you don't need to anymore because well they can't license it to you anymore i think it's a bit it's brilliant and we talked about this oncoming storm a few months back I'm like yeah, yeah ding dong the witch because some people um fedora but they definitely <laughs> yeah. flipped out about it and um strider did have a bit in the notes and he's like i'm sure open fedora well fedora and open susie will still find reasons not to include in their repos guarantee you they will uh yeah <laughs> but 
uh, the one thing I like about this is we can finally, people can finally just start, stop screeching about podcast, which is what we do. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is also an audio podcast. Uh, being distributed MP3, you know, even though that they themselves have never downloaded an AUG in their <laughs> life, you know? And as less and less people keep uh, local copies of their music libraries, I know we just uh, t touched on a particular uh, subset of people who do. Hi, Mom. Uh, <laughs> keeping a particular format under ransom when everything else is basically free doesn't really make sense. And I'm guessing Fraunhofer doesn't really want to pull a Disney when it comes to that particular patent. So, good. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have a few people in chat room talking right now. It's like they're using AUG and stuff like that. That's cool. I like people who like stick with their um, scruples and all that business. But continuing on with this audio nightmare train. Oh, yeah. You want to get that audio and you have some reverb effects or compress your voice down so much that you sound like you're coming off of a landline from the from the 80s oh well, yeah i can <laughs> it's pulse effects it's available on github and i did get a chance to try it um and um at one point it's like five seconds in i caught myself changing the music i was listening to to output to uh the speakers and then mute the speakers physically uh, while having the pulse effects um, output stream coming into my headset so I could tweak around everything and change the equalizer and do all that. And I'm like, oh, crap, I'm turning into Ven. <laughs> it, it, it gets a bit crazy. I, I saw this earlier this week and I was like, yeah, I have not got a chance to try it. But I'll probably try it later this evening because I don't, I don't mess with the box of business or production box anywhere near before show. But if this, this has, this is something we need. If you're out there, and this might not do it, but I'd like to see if this has the option to to allow me, because one thing we use is Pavu Control, which is front end for Pulse. Mm -hmm. and, but once you have that audio kind of makes sense to you, you can start learning. What we need is, uh, because everything like Jitsi and any type of web audio stuff, even... Now you the can new cut, Skype. New Skype. And uh, it does AGC auto gain control, and you can't disable it for the most part. The, you can get kind of wicked screwy in Firefox and kind of disable auto gain control across the board. But what I need is what we need as our little network is the ability to like lock line in and say we need line in at 85% and nothing can move this without creating a script that loops it back to that setting, which I may have done. Uh, <laughs> But if, the, if this uh, Pulse Effects pulls this off, Ben, I, I'm personally going to owe them a throne made out of the skulls of their enemy, man. They do have one option, uh, as you can see in the screenshots, called Input Limiter. I tried futzing around with it, but it didn't seem to do anything. Yes, you can limit just how high it can go, but I didn't actually test to see if it would limit it uh, in the case of Jitsi. Uh, if we were trying to use uh, the input to send voice across Jitsi, because... Let's face it, we are still using old Skype because it works and it has good enough audio quality. And nothing else up to this point, even Discord, as good as it is, it still manages to be slightly worse than old Skype. So it would be really helpful for us to get rid of that. Yeah, that's definitely great. I mean, if it had a gate, a noise gate in it, again, I, I got to yeah. play with it. Trust me, I'll do a deep dive. I'll probably come back and report on it next week. Yeah, Discord sounds fantastic until you fire up Skype. You're like, oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we had that personal experience of like Discord. Yeah, this is sounding pretty good. We might have something then once I hop back on. Jordan, go on Skype. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. It's like, oh, oh okay. okay. That's a bit different. Let's hack the planet before we get out of here. Well, uh, don't know about the planet, but Unity. Yeah, this is our gaming story of the week, so to speak. So, Unity, you, the game engine, uh, their forums got hacked. Uh, they got hacked and the website was defaced. Uh, the, there was uh, someone on Twitter, Amos or Faster Than Lime. Um, he posted a screenshot saying that the forum.unity3d.com domain was hacked by Armine. Don't know uh, if that's an effective um, marketing tactic, but the uh, fine folks at Unity did say thanks to everyone who's reached out about the forums being compromised. They are on it, and a couple of days later, uh, they said, yeah, we know about it, we've seen it, and we're actively trying to basically soup up our security because very clearly whatever they had before wasn't good enough. Now, 
They have two-factor authentication coming up, finally. I mean, it took you long enough. Um, they also have device identification that will alert you, say, you usually log in from a specific machine, like your desktop or your laptop, what have you, and someone else tries to log in with your credentials, or even you yourself, from your phone. You will get an email saying, yo, there's this device trying to access, you know, like Google and most of other social networks already do. And they um, have a, they have revamped their password policy. So you can actually have per organization password reset rotations and strength policies, depending on whomever is using the engine. So, hey, finally. No, I think it's a good thing. Uh, Dak, you kind of, and Michelle kind of brought up what I have here in the show notes if I want to read them verbatim is, oh no, was my email address was to hacked. Uh, because I, <laughs> I'm effectively nine years old, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured that out mentally. Uh, yeah, big shrug emoticon on this. It's like, all right, that, that happened. Hopefully you, you're not using... The same the, password for everything? Your yes. same password or your primary email address? I I mean, then again, we own our own web zone and stuff. We just spool up email addresses like cotton candy because it's brilliant. Uh, it, it looks like they got around to it in time uh, to kind of step in for him commandant he kind of writes and just to read his bit out in the notes like the security group response for the hack says they're white hat and professional but it does uh doesn't seem very professional you know when they throw you know this all over their web zone man you know yeah it's uh if you're defacing a website that's probably not a good idea you find a vulnerability if you are a real white hat you find a vulnerability, you get in touch with the people in charge of that say, yo, find a vulnerability with your forums, here's everything, please change it. And if you want to, if you really want to do something, do the Google thing, it's like, you got 90 days. If you don't do it in 90 days, I'm going to deface your website. Guaranteed, that will get most people to scurry up and just fix it. Pro tip, <laughs> so, you, so you don't go to federal, um, um, uh, can't say the other part, prison. Uh, <laughs> Never deface the web zone, just release it to the public. I mean, it's Microsoft or somebody like that, and like, hey guys, critical vulnerability. Unless it's Steam, then they'll just uh, kick your account off. Oh yeah, they will ban you from yeah. Steam. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> One thing uh, All right. we don't have to worry about is getting banned off anything, because the beautiful party people help make this show possible. Indeed, a very beautiful party people, kicking us 101 to be specific. Uh, kicking us 179 wet stinky caches over on the Patreons. It, it's the uh, it's the end of the month, the start of a new month. So check your credit cards, not for us specifically, but for yourselves, please. Um, just in case you have other specific uh, bills you have associated with that particular card. Uh, if you'd like to kick us a few shekels, though, it's easy enough. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. And you get earlier access to all the neat stuff we do, including Left for Bread, which we need to get to at some point. Uh, and if we do get up to 200, you also get um, to see Jordan suffer through a serious M3 because it just loves It's going to be game. glorious. It's going to be fantastic. And don't forget, I mean, check out all the different tiers because, you know, pick the reward level that you want. I mean, up to mm. and including having votes and stuff that we do. But you also stick around for the after show if you're currently a patron. I see Steve's hanging out in there. And Katana, uh, names in the credits. You're listed as a producer. Somebody calls up and be like, hey, is this person really a producer on this show? Absolutely they are, sir. Uh, I suggest hiring them. But mm, Patreon's not the only way to kick us some shackles. we we got a support page over at linuxgamecast.com. Hit that support button. All the Amazons from Britannia to the States uh, to the Canadias to Space France. Uh, we have an Amazon wish list. Uh, we have some one-time buttons on the paypal is usually like, hey man i just want to kick you a little bit that one time and that's kind of brilliant but speaking of that wish list we got the stuff listed and the reason i'm bringing this up because this this showed up in the post hello Ooh. bradley um, thanks you very much hugs and kisses our good friends uh bought us the pile hum destroyer which we are currently uh using right now it's in the audio system it took me a little while if you follow me on the show, social medias um, there, there was a small adventure in getting everything up and running and, uh, something I forgot if you're a dollar or more Patreon on Patreon, Hey, look how that matches. You get access to our pre pre shows and it's your own yes. custom private RSS feed, which we had the audio adventure episode when I was setting all that up and I finally got everything working, but thank you so much to Bradley. If that is indeed your real name, all that has made me terribly hungry. How about we have a slice? Yes. Of pie. Let's go for a slice of pie. 
So, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, do you have a SCSI drive laying around? Chances are, if you're a computer person, you probably do. Uh, so you'd like to get maybe get some of that data off of there, or say you still have a working SCSI system somewhere in your network, and you would like to introduce Ethernet access to it. You can do it if you have a Raspberry Pi and you don't mind either wiring some of the stuff yourself or, um, well, paying a fine Japanese gentleman who basically created a SCSI uh, adapter that you can plug into your Pi's GPIO ports. Now, he did make generous use of transceivers to adapt the 40-pin GPIO to the 50-pin SCSI, uh, but it works. You know, just honestly seeing an external SCSI conductor, my eyes are like... <laughs> <laughs> it, makes those, it makes those parallel printer uh, connectors just look tiny by comparison. <laughs> oh, man, I, I used to have... I have one over here in the tech closet, an external SCSI <laughs> older white two kit man. Yep. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, it uh, the one he's made available uh, also comes with a actually very tiny ribbon cable uh, that you will need to basically do the wiring yourself to plug it into the GPIO and to the SCSI network, what have you, going on. And if you do want to use um, that SCSI Pi as a network drive and introduce ethernet to the SCSI array you can do it but you will need to be using um at the only one they tested because uh the uh the japanese person who made this uh he's um he made it for the sharp x68000 which is a late 80s pc you know similar to your uh, commodores your amigas what have you uh which used to be very popular in Japan, and it, it's kind of got a whole retro computer scene going off around it in Japan. So uh, if you are, if for some reason you got your hands on an X68000 and you want to try to introduce Ethernet to it, you can, you just have to be using Human OS um, 3.02 on the X68000 and it only they only support Debian, uh, Raspbian, Jesse, on the on the Pi itself. It's definitely a cool project, and you know, l looking at the wiring diagram, because at first I was like, "Ooh, there's a somebody already makes a device very similar to this, which it runs in like mm -hmm. seventy quid." Then you start yeah. looking at the actual um, diagram to wire this critter up, and I was like, "You know, seventy bucks doesn't really sound all that bad." Ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, you kind of got to do it yourself. Coming up next, SnapD on Raspbian Jesse. Yes, please know this is not an official distribution of SnapD. It's a work in progress. Oh no, I'm I'm kind of terrified, man. Uh, uh why? Okay, I, it's I'm all. It, oh, Martin, I got like another two months of making fun of Snap before it's going to be a thing thing. So just give me that. <laughs> so, but, but, but why? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, but. Well, I do know it's uh, it's a Raspberry Pi. If you're going to be using it for something, chances are it's going to be an embedded device, and it doesn't have a regular desktop operating system, and you don't have everything you need to to run just dynamically linked um, bits of software that rely on the system's libraries themselves. And chances are you just want to use a very specific software on top of Whatever. Oh, oh, check this Martin. out, man. There's a bit of a note that this will not work with the Pi 1 or the Pi 9. Incompatible. Yeah. Oh, oh, and speaking of Wimpy, here he is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he is. Uh, yeah, so you actually need a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 3 for this to work. Uh, don't know exactly why, but there it is. Uh, guess Martin will let us know for next week. But yeah, it's since it's a very focused deployment that you're doing with a Raspberry Pi, chances are. Uh, you kind of it kind of makes sense to have a container to mm -hmm. run your software or the software that you want to run on that particular uh, device from Snap. All right. Hopefully that was enough Pi news to satisfy your caloric needs for this Wednesday. It's kind of brilliant. Hey, let's do a little bit of feedback. And if you want to get in touch with us, head over to linksgamecast.com. Hit that contact button. That's a thing we do. Fill it out. 
let us know. It's like, hey, are you doing something right? Maybe we're doing something wrong. We love stuff like that. Thoughts, hints, ideas, suggestions. Give it to us. And if, if it's just a little bit awesome, we're going to put it on the show. You, you can leave comments uh, in the YouTubes. That's fine. Just uh, don't get a little cranky if we don't include them, because that's not the first place we look. The other contact form, we have a special mailbox set up just for that. So, starting us off this week. Well, we have Josh. And he's actually talking about some gaming. That's the, hey, that's the wrong show there, uh, Josh. But he says that NVIDIA is better for gaming on both Linux and Mac OS. Well, not that you get much of a choice in Mac OS. Well, Basically, is, it's um, better. I guess because we, we, we were talking about the AMDs on yes, last Wednesday. Yes, uh, we show. were talking about the AMD Vega. Uh, and no, it, was, uh, it wasn't Vega. It was the RX 580, which uh, people were. Um, Flashing the 580 V BIOS into the 480s. So basically, it's better for gaming and all, except Windows. Windows has DirectX, which really levels the playing field. Sure, there's Vulkan, but that's going to take a while for for it to even come close to catching up with DirectX in terms of implementation. Most game development companies are perfectly happy with DirectX, and if you're lucky, OpenGL. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and even the companies that do make games in OpenGL don't always release their games on Linux. Looking at you, Bethesda. Uh, for example, it would be really nice if Blizzard, or also another one, released their games for Linux. Though, play on Linux makes it pretty easy to get Windows games running on Linux. Uh, you misspelled Lutris, because if you want to talk easy, the games that uh, Lutris does support... Oh, hi, Matthew. Uh, you're gone you most use of the show. My, my, my voice is way too weak to be striders, <laughs> man. I, I, I don't think people are believing us. Um, you you no. use the Lutris. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, seriously, uh, when it comes to ease of use, Lutris is where you want to um, be looking at. Uh, ease of use, yes, but also nightmare of a human user interface, also. I mean, it's 10. Python. <laughs> um, and between Lutris and uh, Play on Linux, it's either Python or Jython, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's definitely a thing. So let's see. Do we? Yeah, I think we have one. Yeah, actually, we do. We had a couple uh, more um, about this because I did the um, getting DaVinci running on the sixteen oh four LTS. DaVinci, the <laughs> multimedia audio, way too expensive, but they have a limited home version. I mean, it's kind of powerful. I mean, if you got the Black Magic mm-hmm. hardware that supports it, which a lot of people didn't read the fine print, and they're just like, re. I can't get any audio. And I was like, oh, well, when do you think a piece of uh, black magic software made for black magic by black magic might need that? No. I was like, well, <laughs> maybe it does. Anyway, uh, they, they were just watching the video. And uh, this one lad, he writes in, he's like, what is the name of this Amazeballs graphic? That this one right here. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Really? Uh, 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 I'm pretty sure that's called Adwaita or the default theme in every single distro ever. Right. He's a good video to venture mem- It's a great middleman theme. What, what can I do to download this? Thank you for your free. Install XFCE4 <laughs> and hit the high contrast button on themes and boom. <laughs> that, that's the icon set. But remember, kids, if you're going to change your desktop manager, you need to completely format your system and restall a different uh, spin or distribution in order to yes. make that work correctly. <laughs> also, to get back, because I just want to point about this, uh, somebody, I think, asked last night or this morning, how do I install DaVinci on Mint 17 whatever, to which I'll reply, install 1604, like the video says in the beginning. Hmm? I mean, it's Mint. Really? <laughs> You're running Ubuntu. It just has I, I've game. just never understood the mentality of like, here's how you do install this with this particular version using this. And I show up and I'm like, hey, I'm using something completely different. Does it work? I don't know. I, even that uh, those uh, benchmarks I did for Martin for Ubuntu made testing all the different uh, uh, window managers and the compositors. Someone came down on the um, the comments saying, could you also test uh, Linux Mint 18 to see how it would compare? Hi. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I could show up to church Sunday morning too. But um, <laughs> let's talk about things that are actually going to happen. And unfortunately, one of those is that we've ran out of time for this Wednesday. We'll be back. Check us out. The uh, easiest way to get notified is uh, just subscribe to our YouTube channel thingy. 
You do that and you click the ringy bell and that way it'll just light up your house and be like, hey, these guys are going live and you will know about it. We have a schedule button at LinuxGameCast.com. That's always the thing. Come join an IRC if you want. Uh, we do have a Discord. That's up top. That's our Camp Hagen room for our $1 and above um, yeah. Patreons. And it's kind of awesome. That That's where we're at the other six days of the week. Then That's where the madness does take place, kind of like in our own closed-off place that doesn't go out to the general public. It's a bit awesome. Want to screw at me? I'm at Vin Stone on the Twitter Nets Plus Vin Stone on the G Plus, and I do my best to try to at least get back to you on either of those. Yeah, uh, you can find me. Usually I'll get back to you right then and there on G+, assuming I get the notification, uh, which I often do. Uh, that's plus Pedro Mateos. Or if you poke me on Twitter, I might not see it because I have those emails disabled, so I'll check it like once a day every now and again, unless we're doing the show, at which point I uh, share everything and I have a little look at the notifications. That's at and accounted for if you want to find me there. So I guess that pretty much wraps us up, don't you think, Strider? Yeah, makes a very good. Uh, um, <laughs> go to the Lutris uh, net, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm I'm not Sweater, gonna go if, this, if this was German. <laughs> if this listen, man, if this was Saturday show, I would have ended what I was about to say. Got to about right here on my tongue, <laughs> and I said, "Nope, <laughs> don't." This is our nicer show, but that's gonna do it. We will we will see you next week. Beautiful, beautiful party, people. Bye. Don't want to say Wave so bad. Strider, nope. don't, come on. <laughs> Let's just. Uh, it was going to start with hail. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, France did give up on that right quick. So yeah. Yeah, I had to stop myself twice from doing that because it's such an <laughs> obvious nine-year-old mentality joke. Just like, oh, I want to do it, but no. I mean, for as much as I praise Strider for being thin, he seems to have actually gotten thinner. Didn't even think that was possible. Yeah, man, he got cursed. Yeah. He also looks delicious. Not touching that. <laughs> Export. We need to put this in. To the wave. Say, what? Mm. Nope. Can't make a wave at .mp3. That doesn't work then. Um. <laughs> 32-bit float PCM. Yes. How'd we do a backup? All right. So uh, there were a couple of links missing on the notes. Uh, comments. All right. Let's plop this down. What if we do this here. in 3509? So Better. Hail Hydra. See? Yes. See, <laughs> Linux Nero, you're the real MVP. I just wish I was paying attention to Discord because I, I would have gladly thrown out a Hail Hydra because <laughs> I, 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 that kind of kills both uh, birds with one chainsaw, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Hail something. Let's see. We can also copy this one. So the links are not missing anything because they were missing the feedbacks. All right. Okay. Okay, the links have been fixed. You can now copy paste those. <laughs> I was just gonna add them in. I got I, I got to do all the show notes and stuff too, dude. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wanna just uh, copy paste them from the uh, Google Doc, you can because I added those in now. Huh. Yeah. Let's see, French weapons in history. <laughs> You leave it out to dry for a couple of days, eh, you can kill someone with it. <laughs> ah, and that's drinky. It's kind of like the, um, junk they have at the, um, I don't want to call it a dingy grocery, but it's kind of one of the lower red ones. 
they, they always guess? have yeah they always have like a the loaves the baguettes and yeah i think those things have been in that basket since like the first time i've ever set foot in that place years ago <laughs> I mean, uh there's a one of the uh supermarkets around here actually they bake their own bread and their baguettes are pretty good uh, and if you go there at right around the time they're coming out of the oven so good mm. so good I don't eat bread, so. I like bread. I love bread. I don't eat it. That's why. <laughs> there is a connection there. It's got a lot of calories, yeah. And a lot of carbohydrates. Um, yeah, okay. Language filters off. Hide your husbands. Um, yeah, I, I will straight up fuck up some bread. Same way I was talking with Jordan about like mashed potatoes. I'm like, I'm very careful about making mashed potatoes and the amount wise because yes, that's how much I'll be having. Is the answer is yes. Yeah, uh, mashed potatoes, even just um, regular spaghetti with a little bit of the uh, American sauce, ranch dressing. <laughs> spaghetti with ranch. Look. Yeah. Look, I was a kid in college, university, as the case may be, uh, just uh, not knowing what to cook. I was going like, oh, right, I can boil some spaghetti. So, um, right, mayo, ranch dressing, done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude thought about card me. I forgot I, I, I shaved. Like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't see Given the chance, I'm not going to shave this bit ever again. <laughs> uh, I don't even know why I did it. I, I will trim it, but I won't shave it. <laughs> it was like shaving. You know, I had the straight razor out, and I was already like getting rid of the neck beard, and I was like, ah, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Let's and see, how about cooking meth? Jesse. <laughs> hey, yo, Mr. White. Uh, no, I, I tried shit ton of different drugs in university, but cocaine was pretty good, but, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's exactly why it was pretty good that I'd never touched it <laughs> again. Well, apparently you touched enough of it to put ranch on your spaghetti. <laughs> that was that had nothing to do with cocaine, okay? Or, or so, or so your lying, lazy. your lying, damaged brain tells you it doesn't. <laughs> but it, it totes that was it. just me being lazy, okay? <laughs> ah, I like sandwiches with the Russian salad. It that's not weird at all. It's like grab two loaves of bread and just shove whatever you have lying around in it. Well, what the hell is a, wait, a Russian Oop. salad? What is that made out of? Vodka and um, homophobia? <laughs> also, a bunch of vegetables and mayo. Mm. <laughs> Just a bunch of uh, boiled vegetables mixed in with mayo. Oh, Russian salad. Some people will also add like uh, some manner of pasta into the mix, but that's just pointless. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Russian salad is okay. Again, it's one of those very lazy things to do. Uh, <laughs> you just put the uh, the vegetables boiling in a pan, wait for a little bit. Once it's done, you take out the water, throw in some mayo, done. I messed up a few weeks ago because I I don't like the really crunchy jalapenos. Mm. Like super fresh ones, so yeah. I was like, "Hmm, I don't feel like steaming them either." And uh, this is I like the crunchy ones, though. What? I like the crunchy jalapenos. Yeah, I just wasn't feeling it, but I forget what it was. But maybe like a wrap or something like that, like a lettuce wrap. And I did. I didn't want like having to work on it, and so I just boiled them for a hot second, you know. Mm -hmm. and popped them out. I didn't cut them. They were just floating on the top, and I was like, "Oh man, these are like yeah. pickled." And that was awesome. Great texture. I, I cut them up and I was like, oh, because like pickled jalapenos is the reason I don't buy those because I'll just pour those in a bowl and put hot sauce on them and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not crying because of this show. I'm just crying because of the, the stuff I'm eating. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The hot sauce gives them flavor. 
Jalapenos are sweet, man. Not <laughs> Jalapenos are good. They're just good. They're sweet. <laughs> ah. Let's see. Oh, Nori's a really big fan of the uh, pickled, um, the teeny tiny cucumbers. What are they called? They have a name. Cournichons? <laughs> French name. Uh, yeah, she's a big fan of those. I, I think I had one once since like, ah, uh, no. Cornichon? Cornichons, yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, uh, peanuts over here in Portugal also have the, are also known as cacahuetes. <laughs> that is a cucumber for ants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool show. Man, all right. That's just a bunch of lies, man. That's just cucumbers for impatient farmers. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they breed them to be that small or if they just pick them up before time, but yeah, they're, they're tiny. Uh, I'm not a, even a fan of regular... Um, cucumbers it's just those the pickled ones at least are even worse yeah see if i had somebody to peel cucumbers for me <laughs> i'd eat a lot of cucumbers <laughs> um, that's I, what i do with carrots sometimes i won't even peel them i'll just wash them really well and eat them hmm. <laughs> now pickles i will mess up some pickles i, I eat pickles like once every three years but i'll, I'll eat you know half of a three gallon thing in one day then I'll be done yeah. for another three years of my pickles <laughs> once I ate Mexican Ken something and I had so much more jalapenos that I had stomach pains after well that's how you build up a tolerance <laughs> <laughs> no it's great I mean eating really spicy food it's awesome at one point you just stop feeling the inside of your mouth and it's like oh okay now I can eat all of this and not care and then a few hours later you gotta have a poop then you feel it I feel, you feel it all sorry for you little cupcakes <laughs> poor little bobbies I can't eat the big bowl of spicy food I know I eat the big bowl of spicy food I just don't uh, I don't enjoy it when it comes out again bobbies <laughs> It's like people complaining about Taco Bell. It's like people just say that because they think it's a thing to say now and it's been worn out. And it's like, hey, no one really eats a Taco Bell. It's a conspiracy theory. Except for Jordan. There is no Taco Bell here in Portugal. If you want tacos, you will have to go to a place that makes tacos that is not Taco Bell. Del Taco. <laughs> uh, there's a, a tapas place. A couple Dino Fire, down. Steve. See you next week or Saturday. Whichever comes first. Yeah. See you, Steve. Yeah, there's a tapas place that, down the street a couple of blocks that makes all right tacos. And you can pick between the uh, half kebab shell or the regular crunchy shell. Hmm. So I, I watched Gets last night. Uh, the uh, ScarJo oh. one? Yeah, ScoJo. I Sko watched Joe. live action... <laughs> Watch the live action gets, man. I mean, my mor my morbid curiosity got the best of me. He's like, you know you're going to watch it. I'm like, I'm never watching that. He's like, yeah, you are. You're not going to be able to fight it. <laughs> so. You might watch it at some point, but. Uh, eh. it's like, this, is, this is what's wrong with Hollywood. Okay. They, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, so don't worry. You don't, you don't have to go screeching off into the night. Um, they over explained or if they, first of all they fucked with the story and I'm like you don't do that you, you're fucking with a classic movie I'm sorry you know it's an amendment still then you, you don't you don't fuck with the story pretty much That's a shot like for, making a live action version of Akira and instead of just we're uh, getting to this regular. we're getting to this we're, we're getting to this <laughs> and kind of a shot for shot that like big establishing shots they captured but then they added some stuff that's like again you're fucking with the story and the parts of the story that they normally they over explained it like 
Okay, we we think you're a glue stick munching troglodyte that can't pick up on anything. And it's like, <laughs> when was the original Gits released, man? Like 90? 90? Uh, 1990, 90, 90, Right. I, I don't even think I was a teenager at the time. And I watched it. Guess what? Got 100% of it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't need anything explained to me. And I was like, whoa. All right. That, that, that was a great movie. And... They, they was like, nope, mm-mm. The, uh, the modern viewing audience and from Hollywood pictures are uh, dumber than a twenty, a nine-year-old from twenty years ago. So ninety-five in the U.S. That's factor. Okay, mm-hmm. so it, yeah. th- that's how they laid it out. Fortunately, yes, Mir. That's what that's what I was alluding to. Thank you. But of course, that was Jap- Japanese made, so. Mm-hmm. It, the story stays more or less the same. They just had to make some compromises for the live action thing. <laughs> but uh, after watching it, I didn't hate it. About halfway through, I quit paying attention to it to just see what they were fucking with the story at that point. And I was like, that oh, never happened. I turned into that guy, but all by myself. <laughs> and once I got done, I, I breathed a sigh of relief, Pedro. I breathed a sigh of relief. I did. <laughs> I did. True story. Why? There we go. Um, because what's in Discord right now? Because now I know for hundred percent absolute fuck mothering fact, they're never going to try to do a live action version of Akira. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew that because they would fucked exist. up that movie so hard and killed the base for it, and it tanked so hard they could taste it. And that taste is still going to be in their mouth organs when somebody goes, let's do Akira. And I'm like, starring yeah. who? Nicholas Cage and Keanu Reeves is Tetsuo Kaneda. <laughs> and I was like, mm, oh, I retract everything I previously said. Please make that movie for my enjoyment for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I'll watch that. But yeah, no, that's what I was uh, hitting at earlier. It's I saw the start of the live action Akira movie. Never finished it, but it's like, oh, okay, so they made some compromises. It still doesn't work. It still doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one I didn't even touch. <laughs> I like Evangelion way too much to even look at that you, one. You see, the Japanese live-action stuff, I'll give a pass because that's the thing, but I, I think we're saved from a Hollywood version. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way they're making that. So, now the I watched the uh, Japanese version of uh, what was it Spaceship Yonamata, uh, whatever it was. I figured somebody in chat room is like, Derp, "Dumbass is what it's supposed to be." Uh, the captain with the big white bushy beard, starship, whatever. Uh, All right, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've watched so much anime, I forget names. <laughs> I had to look up uh, when you, when I saw that uh, trailer for uh, Dark Tower. Battleship that Yamato. That was that's it. the one. Yes. That for the budget they had for that, pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Pretty I didn't see good. the the live action one. See, there's Chips. Chips is like dumbasses. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, but yeah, no. I uh, when you share the link to uh, the trailer for Dark Tower. Yeah, the well, that's the first thing I saw this morning, and I was like, mm, sort of want play. Mm, don't really care. <laughs> so I saw that, and I saw him reloading the revolver. And it's like, wait a second. What was that anime called? Oh, Grenadier. Okay. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. I'm going to need the uh, the bullets to come out of either the cleavage or the butt crack, and you reload them all in one go into the revolver. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, even for the fantasy that is, you know, the Dark Tower series, watching, like, the toss of the six shots, the six mm-hmm. rounds, and, like, swiping it by with a revolver and catching it. Yep. I was like... <laughs> Dude, the, the, that annoying physics thing in the back of my brain's like I, we, we we can't let go of that man. I mean, <laughs> it's like in theory 
yes, but that would be one in five hundred thousand trillion. And, and that thing in the back of my brain happily watched all the Matrix screaming, statistically improbable, not impossible. All right, just shut up and enjoy it. <laughs> I was like, okay, other thing in my head. And but yeah, that I was like, Arr. but I, I. Mm. I just kind of want to say The Dark Tower is not something that I'll ever translate to film. I've been wrong about that so many times. The only... They can do it. Looking forward to this hate mail. Uh, <laughs> Stephen King, anything I think has ever transferred to film correctly was his short story, The Mist. That... Oh, the... Um, it's The, the Mist. You can put two and 13 together what it's about if you haven't seen it. Um... <laughs> Shot for shot, trying to think the name of visually the it worked out. And the ending, they kind of did their own special ending and it caused me to everyone to be in terror and I bust out laughing in the theater. Uh, when the army comes rolling in? Uh, it's, you know, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, what was his name? Main actor person, come on! Well, Chibs, uh, it's kind of the thing, man. ScarJo... David Drayton. <sighs> Scarjo no, just the, I'm not saying there's any acting involved in the major, but yeah, and plus the action scenes seem low rent, man. All right, the Green Mile. I I'll, I'll give you the Green Mile. Misery, nah. I mean, yeah, it might have been a good ad- adaptation. I just, I just didn't enjoy Misery. I keep forgetting that Stephen King has written some like uh, Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Misery. Oh, I know Kathy that Bates face. Man. I think I've seen that movie, but I can't remember it. Misery. Yeah, I've seen this movie. God, that was a long time ago. 1990. I like the gits for the cohesion of the different storylines which they merge together. What I want to, to see out of gits are, is the final episode of the OVAs. Hmm. No, I just want them to continue on with standalone complex, man. I put off watching standalone complex until like four years after it came out. I was like, that's a TV show. It's going to be horrible watch. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. Give me more of this. Very good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, I'm also waiting for the rebuild of Evangelion episode four. That's been promised since like 2007. I mean, it makes uh, the Elsing Ultimate OVAs look timely by comparison. Mm. <laughs> the the creator of. Uh, Evangelion and the guy who was directing the uh, the rebuild of Evangelion just said, I was so fucking done with Evangelion, I couldn't do it anymore, I had to go off and do something else. And that something else was that stupid Godzilla movie a while back. <laughs> that they managed to kill off Brian Cranston in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> first 20 minutes of the movie, come on. Oh, and my video... Went kaput. There we go. Rise was let down compared to Rise was okay. Yeah. I, I mean, they still need to release the last episode, but Rise was okay. Yeah, it, was, it was serviceable. Remember I read Terminator 3, the book made from movie, and the book was still better than the movie? Let me reread that. Terminator 3, the book made from the movie, and the book... Yeah, okay, right, okay. (laughs) That makes sense now. They made a book out of the movie, right, and the book was still better. Well, uh, That's not a really high bar you're setting there, just saying. (laughs) I'm always a bit dodgy about that, because uh, I'm like... The Bourne series. It's like, come on, popcorn movie, right? 
and you don't watch that for anything other than say, all right, nin- you got no, it's an action flick. No. Ninja <laughs> protagonist, curb stomp everyone. Then, then I messed up and read one of the novels, like the paperbacks, because I was on a plane. And this is before Wi-Fi. I was get off my lawn, and I picked it up at the airport and like read through. And I was like, these are really good books. You know, b- because they can't fill in fifteen minutes of action with no dialogue, uh-huh. they actually have to you know blow out the story and stuff like that. And I can't watch the Bourne series anymore. I'm like, I'm out. Uh, what was that movie that you mentioned in the Hangout a while back? That was very actiony, very good, as just an actiony thing. <laughs> good luck, son. Um, sounds like you got some scrolling to do. <laughs> yeah. Logan. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what Logan? Yeah. Logan was an awesome action movie. It was awesome. I mean, the rest of the movie was also not entirely bad, but the action scenes. Yes. <laughs> well, they basically said, all right, we get to make an R-rated movie. And it was like, how R-rated? Yes, is the answer to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, how far can we go? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, 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 whenever an action scene started, I'm like, yes, yes. Give me, give me, I want more. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was a good movie. I, I thought it kind of, I'm not going to spoil anything. The, the ending was a little cliche. My, and I was like, all right, that's how it happens. Rice was a, uh, yeah, it, it, it's still more in that universe, man. I mean, they they should explore that universe, you know. How, how many shells or ghosts, I guess you should say. Because they're, that's something in the movie that is made, like, abundantly clear. Like, there's just around a number, like, 99. Pretty good. I don't know. I haven't found any. I, I'm being lazy, and I'm waiting for uh, Dragon Ball Super to get yeah, the I'm English Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for that, the uh, the new series to kind of close out the arc, so I can just watch it all in one go. I'm gonna wait for that. Then I'm gonna wait for the full English dubs because <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind the subs. I, as long as I get subs, I'm good. <laughs> most of the time, I'm the sub guy, but. Big Bell Super is not something that holds my attention hard enough. Like, you actually have to focus. I like something I can listen to. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, beautiful party people. We are going to be noping to the max. Yes. It's right around time. Dinner time, that is. Dinner time. Oh, yes. man. I got a while for dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, time zones, how do they work? Uh, sun, he says? <laughs> <laughs> the way the sun hits the earth at a given angle when yeah. it's considering its rotation. It... I don't want to talk to no scientist. Y'all motherfuckers lying and getting me pissed. <laughs> All right. Beautiful people, we'll... Uh... Say goodbye, Matthew. Le bye-bye. <laughs> We'll see you Saturday. It's been real. It's been brilliant. Yes.